Hello, and welcome to this introductory video on Hooke's Law. And in this video, we're just going to be quickly talking through what a restoring force is, and this idea of what is Hooke's Law, and what are Hookean springs. So, having said the word springs, it gives away our starting point. We're going to look at a spring. And the reason that we're going to do that is because we know that if we take this spring, and we start to try to compress it, then as we do that, that spring will actually exert a force back against our attempt to squash it down. We also know that if, on the other hand, I take this spring, and what I want to do is actually not compress it, but stretch it. So actually, I'll come over here so that I won't be in the way of the text. If I grab this end, and I start to try to pull it along and stretch it, then when I do that, this is actually also going to exert a force. And so that force now is coming from the end, trying to get back to where its original position was. So it's acting to try to restore the spring back to its normal length. And in fact, that was true in both cases, right? If we, if we compressed the spring, it wanted to expand back to its normal length. If we stretched it, it wanted to shrink back to its normal length. So it was always trying to return to its original position, or that is another way of saying that is, to restore its original state. And such a thing that's trying to restore and work against the change to the system is a restoring force. So the important thing now, though, for us is to focus in on understanding what this restoring force does and how we can quantify it. And Hooke's law just deals with the quantification of this force. And what it says, again, is if I'm going to, say, compress the spring, then as I compress it by some distance, which we'll call delta x, if I want to know what force I'm getting, well, it turns out that it's just going to be some constant times this displacement times a negative sign. We know this basically from everyday experience. Anyway, if you've ever played with a spring, you do know that the further you compress it, or even the further that you stretch it, that is always going to give you an increasing force. The further you go, the harder it is to keep going. And that's what this quantifies. The constant k is just telling you that there's some property of the spring. right? You can have kind of flimsy springs. You can have really strong springs. There's some property, and k is called the spring constant for that spring, that describes basically how um, rigid that spring is. The negative sign is the really important thing. That is what's conveying the fact that it's opposing the change. So if we've compressed it, the negative sign means the force is opposite to that displacement. And again, also if you stretch it, then the displacement becomes in this direction. The negative sign tells you the force is that direction. And that is Hooke's Law. Now, not everything that looks like a spring actually obeys Hooke's Law, but those that do are called Hookean springs, and that's quite a big group of objects. And there are limits to how well this works, because if you compress or stretch something too far, you tend to actually break it. But for a large range of displacements and a lot of different objects, this law actually holds. And we can use it then to understand what's going to happen as we compress a spring or as we stretch a spring. And we can use it to form larger, more complicated systems that we can then explore the dynamics of. 